Given your age, if I ask you to think of a retro computer, it's probably safe to assume that you are all going to have differing answers. Modern children may not ever actually touch a tower PC and fully live on tablets and laptops. Children of the 90s might have grown up with an iMac or a Dell Tower, while those who grew up in the 80s may recall the likes of the Commodore 64's popularity. But what if I told you that two Thousand years before any of this happened, almost unbelievably, it bloody turns out that computers existed in ancient times too. That's right, millenniums before sweaty nerds had started coding in basic whilst crying to Oingo Boingo and the Smiths, an almost forgotten world of technology existed that, upon learning about it, could change your very perception of our distant past and the people who lived through these times. So, with all that said, I am Lady Decade and this is the 2000 year old ancient Greek supercomputer that simply shouldn't exist. When you think of computers from ancient times, you might comically think of an image in your head that looks like this. But such different times would, of course, deliver such different tech. First discovered in a shipwreck off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera back in 1901, a mysterious device would be discovered that would later shake the scientific world to its core. On one fateful day, Captain Demetrios Kontos, with his crew from Syme, a small Greek island, discovered an ancient shipwreckage. Amongst the watery depths, one of the most important puzzle pieces from human history would be salvaged. But what makes this story even more intriguing is that the artifact I am talking about was largely ignored at the time, with a level of indifference existing around it. This may have perhaps been due to attention being drawn away from it due to the ornate bronze and marble statues and glassware that were found alongside it. That and, well, personal computers weren't really a thing in 1901. All items from on board were transferred to the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens and the overlooked mysterious device would sit untreated from the corrosive seawater leading to further damage to the artefact. But fortunately by 1902, one savvy individual would notice the significance of the relics. Archaeologist Valerios Stace would discover the mysterious machinery in question in a piece of rock on the 17th of May of that year, believing the component to be part of a clock, which most dismissed as being too complex of a device for the era it came from. Stace documented that the strange artefact of our past, housed in a wooden framed case comparable in size to a shoebox, featured gears up to 5 inches in size. Nothing like this in history had ever been discovered before, and these remain the oldest preserved gears in Europe. Stace, fascinated by our ancestors' secrets, originally studying medicine, transitioned to archaeology and obtained his doctorate from the University of Halle in 1885, leading to working for and eventually becoming the director of the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Society soon dismissed the item for around 50 years until Derek J. de Solo Price rekindled interest in the item in 1951, pairing with nuclear physicist Haralampos Karakalos to make X-ray and gamma ray images of the 82 fragments, eventually publishing a paper on their findings in 1974. To learn more about this oddity, this single block of material that this strange piece of machinery was made from would be divided into three and eventually up to 82 components, with four of these containing the gears. Decade after decade, in-depth research has been performed on this discovery, and if we fast forward to the 21st century, Cardiff University would use computer X-ray tomography to review the insides and its inscriptions. Tomography is the ability to image components via a penetrating wave, and using this technology, it revealed faint inscriptions and indications of 37 bronze gears. Finally, the secrets of what has become known as the Antikythera mechanism were beginning to be unlocked. From this video's introduction, you will already be aware that this was some kind of computer, but what was this device for? Where did it come from? Were the ancient Greeks using these to do their tax returns? Maybe this was used in ancient Greek schools to make children more computer literate, or perhaps this was simply used on the ship to play solitaire. 
Nope, sadly is nothing that's hedonistic. It is instead possibly the first iteration of an analog computer with one sole purpose, modeling the solar system. Devices such as this are known as orreries and were used to predict the position of the stars and solar bodies. Much like your phone can multitask, this has an extra purpose that is very fitting for the Greek origins. It could track the four-year cycle of the Olympiad, the ancient Olympic Games. So who would have thought a video about an ancient computer would be appropriately timely for 2024's Olympic Games? I probably should have approached them to sponsor this video. Considering how long ago this computer was created, we can't credit the likes of Bill Gates or Steve Jobs for its creation, and as humanity obviously hadn't invented time travel yet, we have to simply put our Indiana Jones hats on to deduce who exactly made this thing. Regarding its origin story, some archaeologists believe that it was created by Hellenistic scientists anywhere from 205 BC to 87 BC, with the shipwreck it was found in appearing to be around 70 to 60 BC, which gives you an idea of how advanced and ahead of its time this technology was. Humanity wouldn't endeavour to make such complex and small devices again until the astronomical clocks of Richard of Wallingford in the 14th century. Come 2008, the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project suggested it may have come in from the colonies of Corinth, as the discovery of a calendar on the Metonic Spiral would indicate the area's origin. The ship's wreckage it was found on featured Rhodian vases, with Rhodes being on both a busy trading port and a home to astronomy and mechanical engineering, alongside that of noted astronomer Hipparchus. The mechanism featured elements that would be based on Hipparchus' theory of how the moon moved, indicating that it may have been constructed with or at least based on his theories. Later theories would slightly combine different locations. It may have been simply created in one area of the world and then adjusted or calibrated for another region. Through time, interest has continued to spike in this device. It may very well have been the oldest known analogue computer that's still in existence. But there has been a further element that has driven up more mainstream attention to this ancient artefact than ever before. This attention stems from Disney, of all places. In 2023, the underperforming Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was released in theatres. Purportedly the final adventure in the cinematic series, but one that features an Antikythera mechanism. Now, with this style of technology being a part of the Indiana Jones world, the dial in this movie features the ability to identify time fissures, leading to a chase for remaining components in an escalating battle across time and the globe. In the film, the dial is assembled and the heroes and villains end up in the Siege of Syracuse in 214 BC, where Archimedes confirms he created it to recruit future heroes in their battle against the forces of Rome. Yeah, there's a reason the movie bombed, and it wasn't the weirdly de-aged Harrison Ford. In the press for the movie, discussion about the Antikythera mechanism would be common, so with it not being an obvious historical relic like the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail, people of course wanted to know if this had roots in reality or was one of the more fanciful concepts. USA Today, for example, would discuss the concept at length, stating, the Antikythera mechanism is not only real, but a mind-blowing artefact. The fragile 2,000-year-old plus antiquity has broken into more than 80 pieces and would not survive handling, much less an Indiana Jones adventure. It has the consistency almost of a wafer cookie, like if you even lifted it, stuff would fall. But it's probably the most significant technological artefact of the ancient world, ever found. The relic's wild discovery is remarkably similar to the tale told in Dial of Destiny. A sponge diver discovered an ancient shipwreck off the tiny Greek island of Antikythera in 1901. The diver was horrified by the sight of a heap of dead naked people on the sea floor, wrote mathematician and researcher Tony Freeth. The underwater excavation that followed revealed a treasure trove of marble statues mistaken for real people and artefacts that would have wowed Indiana Jones.
While the article discusses its history, it does clarify that it was purely designed to calculate the dates of the eclipses, both lunar and solar, alongside that of important dates such as the Olympic Games. With a crank on the side, users would crank to see the alignment of the sun, moon and a limited count of planets at the time, both in the past and the future. This may have been the impetus for the concept of time travel, technically when you look at the sun. You're seeing the sun from the recent past due to the literal speed of light not being instantaneous. For Hollywood writers, they've just extrapolated a conceptual time travel into a literal one. Another extrapolation is that the movie posits that Archimedes definitely created it, but in reality, scientists are very skeptical. Archimedes is one of the Greek world's top mathematical and scientific minds who had a founding role with the gear technology seen in the Antikythera mechanism. Archimedes played a legendary role in defending his Hellenic hometown from a Roman invasion during the siege of Syracuse around 213 BC. He gets prime Hollywood screen time in Dial of Destiny, played by actor Nasser Mimazia in the film's depiction of a Roman naval attack. Historians and scientists have argued whether the war machines displayed on screen, such as the ship destroying Archimedes' claw, actually existed or were embellished through time. Archimedes' death ray, which supposedly needed only mirrors and sunlight to set the Roman ships ablaze, is an even more contested invention. Among the many studies debunking the possibility of this sci-fi worthy weapon, Discovery Channel's Mythbusters devoted three episodes to the death ray, concluding with the infeasible busted tag each time. Archimedes was famous for being the one man keeping the Roman navy off for so long, but not forever. The Romans eventually got in, and he was killed in the city's capture of Syracuse. So, looking back at this interesting device of our past, Disney may have embellished this device's functionality, but there is no denying that this technology is shockingly ahead of its time and should perhaps be considered the world's first supercomputer. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, maybe you would like my previous upload on Saddam Hussein's PlayStation 2 supercomputer. So, subscribe and check it out. See you soon.